In this session we are looking at John 15, verse 12 to verse 27. Have you counted the cost of being a Christian? It's very important that Jesus' disciples are realistic about what it will cost them to follow Christ in a world which is hostile to him. Jesus wants us to be realistic, but to be realistic against the background of the huge privileges of being a Christian. Let me recap on some of those. God, by his grace, has saved us, has forgiven us because of Jesus' death as our sin bearer and substitute on Calvary's tree. He has adopted us into his eternal family and he loves us as our heavenly father with an everlasting love that will never fail us. Jesus, God's son, in a costly way, gave his life for us that we might have eternal life that we might be forgiven and be in God's family and that we might no longer be treated as servants of God or even servants of the Lord Jesus, but we might be uh, described as Jesus does here as friends of Jesus. What a privilege that is that he mentions in verse 15. And thirdly, that the Holy Spirit comes alongside us on our journey towards heaven to be our helper, to be our friend, to be our supporter, to be our enabler, to live the Christian life and to cope with the challenges of life. All these are the privileges of being a Christian. We have a hope and we have a future and we have the presence of God with us in life's journey. But until we get to heaven, we have a fight on our hands against sin, the world, and the devil, sin in our own lives, the attitude of the world that is hostile to God, and the devil who seeks to orchestrate sin in our own hearts, and the opposition of the world, and fan it into flame in opposition to us going God's way. Sometimes it will be hard to be a Christian. Tough choices will need to be made. Difficult ways will need to be chosen. And yet they're the right way and the good way that doesn't lead us to having hang-ups or hangovers the next day or for the rest of our lives. Jesus says, I want you as my disciples to understand that the world is in rebellion against God. It's not neutral and sometimes in rebellion. There's a deep hostility in the world against God. People want independence. They want to go their own way and do their own thing. They don't want to acknowledge and worship God as the God who has given them life and is willing to give them hope and an eternal future. And as a loyal minority living in a rebellious world, sometimes we're going to be disliked. It's important that we're not disliked because we are aloof are angular, are difficult. We need to, God's help to be seen as loving and kind and caring. Uh, but nonetheless, even when we are that, uh, we will sometimes be disliked or marginalised or rejected. Jesus said, secondly, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Verse 20. Don't expect to be treated differently from the way the world treated me, says Jesus to his followers. Uh, don't, don't expect to have an easier time than I had, necessarily. And he goes on to say that the world's attitude to him was irrational, verse 25. It was without any real cause and it was without excuse, verse 22. And that is the source of a considerable amount of guilt in people's hearts. They're rebels in God's world that he's made. They're rebels against God's will and purpose for their lives. And the result of that is guilt that they don't always understand where it's come from or what it's about, but guilt nonetheless. And Jesus says uh, something very important also in verse 23. If, if they hate me, they will hate God 
my father also. Sometimes people say, well, it's all right to believe in God, uh, but I, I don't want this Jesus stuff necessarily. But Jesus is God's means of speaking to a lost world. He comes as its saviour and its redeemer and its friend. We cannot neither know God or have forgiveness and hope for the future or an entry into heaven without a relationship with Jesus. If we reject Jesus, we reject God. We're called upon to take up our cross as Christians, rejoicing in God's goodness to us as his children, and to follow Jesus, whatever the cost, with his Holy Spirit's power and presence with us. That's what Jesus calls us to do. Listen again to verse 26 of chapter 15. When the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness. The Holy Spirit comes to be our helper, supporter and friend in living the Christian life until he takes us to glory. Uh, Jesus spells out what it means to take up our cross and follow him in Mark 8, 34 to 38. And it'd be good for you to read that passage soon after you listen to this talk. Uh, but let us in our lives rejoice as sons and daughters of God that we're on the way to glory and be prepared to put up with some difficulties on the way out of loyalty and love for our Saviour who has redeemed us.